max r and d the globus winner's top strategy however this double-edged sword has its limits this video will walk through how to select your r and d when and how much still having trouble or if you want some moral support because the awesome high r and d strategy is emotionally difficult book a globus coach in the description it is okay to go it on your own we are there if you need us the earnings per share, as we've discovered, and all of the other metrics lend our strategy as the best strategy to store value early so that you can compete towards the end of the game where it really matters what the score is. And so how do we do that? Well, we store value in a number of places. The first place that is best to store value or long-term value, especially during the first half of the game, is in product R&D expenditures. So every dollar that you spend here in product R&D for drones and for cameras will go into a cumulative R&D expenditures account. It's the money that has been spent in previous years that will give you an edge over the competition. If your cumulative R&D expenditures is higher than other teams, then that means your components will decrease and your PQ will increase and the, the cost of a warranty and repairs will decrease and your labor costs will decrease. Your maintenance of plant and equipment will change and you'll be able to compete unfairly or better than uh, the other competitors that don't have that cumulative R&D. And it can be quite significant and especially towards the end of the game. Now, how do we how much R&D can we support? And the answer comes from how much earnings per share do you have above the investor expectation right now? And in the first half of the game, I'm always recommending that you don't want to waste some of these efforts by just posting these numbers to the scoreboard. You actually want to take some of those profits and you want to store them as value in the company to be released later. So we're going to simply raise the R&D expenditure and watch our earnings per share decrease until a point where we're near or um, just below the investor expectations. Let's see how much money we can store into this R&D. Let's keep going. Let's go up to 2,800. We're going to go more than that. Uh, we can still support a lot more. Let's go up to the, the, the maximum. It looks like we still have earnings to, per share to spend. So we're going to go over it into drones. We're going to go up with that. And we're going to go right to the maximum. You'll see that I still have money to spend in earnings per share. Now, if I didn't, I would stop investing in R&D expenditures. Because if my earnings per share is too low, meaning uh, below half of the investor expectations or around 80% uh, of the uh, investor expectations, then I'm going to run into difficulties that the board governing my company is going to create for me. Like they won't let me take on additional loans or expand the company as fast. They won't let me uh, uh, buy back shares, which are things that I'd love to do when my share price is low. And so we don't want to get too carried away in reducing our earnings per share or investing our earnings per share in R&D. There is a limit to that. You'll notice also that R&D expenditures, if I increase my cumulative R&D, the costs change already for that current year, and the PQs will sometimes increase. The second place where I can store value is in market share. In previous videos, I went to a market share that was the profit maximizing quantity. Now, I still have profits that I can spend on higher market share, and I can push strategically the other companies and get a little bit higher image as a result. So now what we're looking for is where can I spend money so that my market share will increase, and that my earnings per share will not decrease very much. So how can I do this? Well, let's take a look at some places. Maybe it's advertising. How much does advertising cost me in earnings per share for every percentage point in market share? Well, let's, let's take a look. I'm going to increase the advertising budget, and I'm going to watch the market share go up by 1%. See the link in the description to book a Globus coach. All right. So I watched my market share go up by 1%, and I watched my earnings per share change. How much did it change? Well, let's take a look. I'm 11.9, uh, and before I was 7,700, and it went from 173 to 168. So that's a, that's a difference of 5 cents. So if I take the difference in earnings per share, and I divide it by the change in market share, which is 1%, I get a ratio, and that ratio is 5 cents per 1% market share. Now, my question is, can I find market share that's cheaper than by changing advertising? So the going rate for advertising changes per market share is about five cents. So let's go back to what I had before and let's increase something else by 1%, maybe uh, one, something else so that market share increases by 1%. Let's increase, decrease price here. And I can't quite decrease price the way it needs to be. It's 26.2%. So that's like 0.8%. And what happened to my earnings per share? Well, it uh, changed by five cents. So I didn't quite get 1% of market share and it cost me f the same five cents. So ch I, I learned that changes in price in this case will be more expensive to get market share than changes in advertising at this time. So let's go back to what we had uh, roughly and let's try something else. Let's try retail support. So I wanna increase my market share in retailer support. I'm going to increase it until there's 1% increase in market share or roughly what it is. So it's not quite 1% and it only cost me one cent in earnings per share. So that's a pretty good deal. Even if I go a little bit higher uh, and it didn't cost me much of anything. In fact, my earnings per share went up. So those are good deals. We wanna find more market share and we want to have the least drop in earnings per share.
So let's do that for Europe Africa. And we know that there's something going on with retailer support that allows me to get a little bit more market share for next to no cost. And it looks like that will give me a little bit more market share there. And you can go through each one of these areas and find out if this is going to benefit your company. Now, sadly, if you're going to increase your market share, you also have to increase the capacity of your facility, which is a bit of an investment. And it's an investment in the short term. It looks like we have ample capacity. Your assembly capability is greater than our projected demand. So we don't have to do anything yet, but we will at some point. So we have to flip between the compensation and facility screen and what we're doing to increase our market share each time. So I've got an earnings per share of $1.72, uh, which is very good. It's about one cent off of what was going on. And I've achieved a 4% or 1% per uh, region uh, market share. So I would continue doing this until I find where is going to be the cheapest market share increase or the cheapest earnings per share, the least earnings per share that I need to spend on market share. Hit the like and sub if you feel like this video is doing any good. So now you see what's happened is I've spent a lot of my earnings per share, the excess earnings per share, and I've spent it on the market share. And I need to go into facilities. And I need to make sure that I've got a roughly the capability is equal to the demand. If it's not, I need to increase the number of installed workstations. To do that, I need to in include some spaces or build some spaces for those workstations to be in. Here you've got uh, the assembly capability being roughly equal to the, to the demand again. So I, I'm farther ahead, though, because my image rating has increased. Now it's time to address this ending cash issue again. So I go back into my finance and cash flow page, and I have to regulate what's going on on this page again, because I've made changes to the quantity produced and to the profit that I've been producing. My investor expectation is about the equal to my earnings per share. Yes, I can go below that, but I'm not going to this time because my product R&D expenditures is already at a maximum, and I don't see any need to go below my earnings per share, uh, especially on the first year, uh, when I've already got a fairly healthy market share and I have invested enough money so that I can raise my image up uh, that much more. So you notice my debt to equity is still less than my 60-40 criteria, but my current ratio is lower than two. So I want it to be at, at uh, let's call it uh, uh, 2.1. So let's take a look at how much money I have to take in 10-year bank loans to make that happen. And we're going to try a number of combinations. You notice my debt to equity has reached 62.38. I don't like that, so I'm going to come down and come down to a current ratio of greater than 2.2. Now, what's more important? Is a current ratio of 2.2 or greater more important than a debt to equity percentage? I would say try both criteria. And so how do we get back to a debt to equity percentage that's lower? Well, I have to reduce either uh, the number of shares that I'm going to be purchasing or I need to reduce the increases in the size of my facility. Now I can't do that. I have to go through demand. I always wanna make these two equal. You can't just reduce the spaces without having any consequence. So I'm gonna reduce demand by a little bit. So let's go ahead and do that in AC Camera Marketing. And hopefully I'll be able to make a little bit more profit as well. So I'm going to look at some of my low operating profit margin areas and maybe increase the uh, price there. That will decrease the market share or the demand and increase my earnings per share very, very uh, incrementally. Let's take a look at this. And we always want to get things fairly well balanced. And we don't want to uh, have a market share percentage that drops off too much. Compensation facilities. And I'm pretty close to the capability is sort of equal to the demand. Let's in maybe increase that just a little bit and redo this. All right. So I'm much closer there. I'm more comfortable at that. And we go back into finance and cash flow. My debt to equity is still off. My current ratio needs a little bit more debt. So I'm going to have to reduce the market share once again to accommodate that. Let's reduce it in North America. That gives me a little bit more profit go back to finance and cash flow. It's very iterative. And I have a current ratio of almost 2.2, still not enough. Let's decrease uh, a little bit more market share and go back into compensation and facilities. Uh, they're roughly equal. And so I go back into marketing again and I look at, oh, can I get a little bit more profit? And can I get a little bit less market share? Maybe in Latin America, it's a weaker area. So where do I find that? Well, now I've got a capability that is greater than the demand. Let's reduce that capability. That's less money that I have to spend on my facility. I'm comfortable right here. It's near enough to what's going on. Maybe I'll do a little bit less uh, marketing. I'll try this. And uh, my demand is greater than my capability. Let's do it again. It looks like this is the one. And maybe 180 days. It reduces my market share. I've spent not as much, and I'd love to spend that extra money, but I just don't have room to grow. And so I'm going to reduce the number of spaces and that is fairly close to what I want to be. Let's go back into the finance and it looks like I have more cash. My current ratio is healthy and I can repurchase those shares. And I'm still at a debt to equity of 60-40. I'm still at a current ratio of two more than 2.2. And I've bought as many shares as I can, repaid loans, taken out new loans. My projected cash balance is fine. And it's all the balance that surrounds product R&D expenditures to maximize that first. Then my market share, spending all of my profits that I can up to the limit that debt allows. And I've readjusted my facility to be roughly the capability to be roughly equal to the demand. We made a third and best way to forecast your competitive assumptions. It's available as a free spreadsheet you can download in the description. Completing the Globus walkthrough in the order presented is best. Click on this video next and don't forget to subscribe.